skeletons in my cupboard. I offered to do a talk on the skeleton postmarks. Um, it's a talk in probably two parts. The first skeletons came into use, first skeleton counsellors came into use um, in the early 1970s. And the last example I've got is from 2011, but I've no reason to think that uh, they aren't continuing in use. And I'd be very interested in any information anyone's got, particularly from uh, Sraak, on usage, uh, or, uh, particularly more recently. Um, I think most people understand that the skeleton is a standard product from uh, the crown agents, and you find examples of them in the West Indies, uh, in West Africa, uh, and other colonies. Uh, and they were intended to provide temporary postmarks. And basically, uh, it's a John Bull printing outfit. You have a set of little letters. You slot those into the ring that makes the councillor, and there are a standard set of uh, date slugs. And the format of the council is the same as a star council. Uh, sorry, it's similar to a star council. You have a row of three uh, slots for the date, day, month, and year. And these are in a straight line, unlike on a, a, on a star council where they're, they're in two rows. Uh, this is a straight line with three holes, three slots, day, month, and year. And then uh, uh, there is a separate single slot, which is intended for a star. Um, it, we will see, I think, in the very last few slides today, um, that there were two sets of uh, skeleton kits purchased by the uh, Malay, uh, Malaysian postal authorities. Um, the early ones use an English abbreviation for the month. The second series use a Malay uh, uh, um, uh, abbreviation. So December is DE in, on the English ones and is DI on the later Malay ones. Um, they were used as temporary fill-ins and that could be from a single day to several years. Um, and there are no records that I'm aware of uh, other than uh, basically what our membership uh, wrote down at the time. Um, like most post offices, uh, records don't seem to get into the archives uh, and so on. OK, the very first one was used at Seabow. Uh, uh, I'm afraid those in Surat will have to put up with my pronunciations. I'm sorry, some will certainly be wrong. Um, oh. Seabow's uh, near Bintulu in, in what uh, we still refer to in the UK as the fourth division. We're used to those old maps. The post office opened uh, with a star council in 1961 and uh, we don't know why but in 1971 uh, a skeleton was introduced. We'll see down the years that uh, sometimes a, 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 a councillor was lost, stolen, destroyed in a fire, um, the handles occasionally broke, the handles were made of wood and so occasionally those broke. Um, so the first one we've got is from 1972 uh, and uh, we, we've got this uh, official registered cover. Um, I found it difficult over the years to collect um, official, well, commercial and official covers with these councillors on. When they were in use for one day or two days, um, clearly they, they are very, very hard to find. Um, but uh, we'll, as we'll see as we go along. Um, uh, the second one is here at Nonok. Uh, this is a picture uh, that came uh, uh, from 
I, th I think probably chunky text, uh, but certainly was circulated at that time of the post office at Nonoc. Um, and unlike uh, the Cibao one, this was used uh, for from 1972 until 1974. And this was used um, uh, for an office that was just opening. And uh, this also, um, over the uh, two-year period, um, we can see that the date slugs and the star got moved round. The oldest one here is to the left, and you can see, it, 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 you, uh, if you look at, in particular, look at the middle one, you'll see the date with the day, month, and year in the, the position that the designer no doubt intended. Uh, you can see that uh, initially the year 73 has gone in to the star slot. And then uh, you might say we've got the full set uh, on the right hand side in April 74. Uh, you will notice um, that uh, we will see examples. Uh, this is probably the most common format, the right hand one there. Uh, we will see as we go along that sometimes the clerks would make the councillor up uh, it, it, it inverted relative to that right hand one. So where the star, if you take the star and the date as, as fixed, then Nonok would appear where Sarawak is, and Sarawak correspondingly mm. the other way, and all and the lettering also is the letter slugs turned upside down, um, uh, which basically gives you something resembling uh, a, the sort of format of a star cancel. Um, Long Lama, um, this is a relatively modern picture, um, and uh, this is Google Maps, uh, and you can see just on the right, just at the end of the railings, for some reason, Google have um, smudged out the post Malaysia sign. This is the district office, Long Lama, and uh, there, this was in use for a relatively um, long period as well, from 73 to March 75. Uh, and I've got here an example of the Long Lama um, one. Uh, the star here, this is an example I was, uh, I didn't realize it was the next one. Um, the star now has gone to the top. This is the, in, the, the, the reverse, uh, oh, sorry. It's the reverse of the, of the Nonok one, the right hand Nonok one. Long Lama there, uh, February 74. This is our good friend, Mr. Uswi Bok, who I think tried to get, possibly succeeded in getting uh, a councillor from every office that was open at the time. Um, and uh, we now come on uh, still in 1973. So quite they, they, once the kits arrived, they were used quite heavily. Um, TPO7 was based in Kuching and here we had a new TPO and the uh, Italian single line date stamp SLD cancellor didn't arrive until June 75. So to fill in, they used uh, a, a skeleton cancellor. And uh, it's worth noting um, one of the problems with the first set of skeleton councillors they purchased was although they have date slugs uh, with numbers, they only had letters um, in the uh, part uh, that, that forms the country name and the town name. So when you had TPO7, uh, they didn't have a seven. And if you look carefully, um, the seven is actually an inverted L. And as we go on, you'll see that the TPOs, when they were substituted uh, with a skeleton, they put the town name. So we'll see TPO Miri, TPO Sariki, and so on as we go along. And that I'm quite sure was because they had no slugs of numbers um, which they could fit in. Um, 
Uh, here's just an interesting piece of paper um, from TP07 at that time. You can see in the top left hand corner the faint cancel. Um, this is a list of registered articles. One of the topics I have wondered whether we might look at uh, at a weekend is uh, post office stationery, the actual paperwork that goes behind uh, the handling of the mail. Here um, we've got a list of registered articles and you can see the registration numbers here, 298 up to 310, assuming that was one day's business, which it seems it may be. Um, that seemed to me quite good, uh, quite good business. And here are a list of destinations um, and a note at the bottom, 15 loose uh, items there. Um, I've only seen one or two of these forms over the years, uh, but that, it's an interesting sort of background because th there's an enormous amount of paperwork that doesn't get out of the post office and we don't see, but is important to the running of the business. Um, this is the Lu Tong post, uh, post office. This is a relatively modern picture, but that uh, office, it's, it's, it looks to me as though it's been recently painted. I have a much older picture that looks uh, much more drab, but that's the Lu Tong uh, post office. And um, we, we know that the uh, Lu Tong star became unusable, although we're not sure why. Um, Francis, who I thought might be on the call, but I don't think is, Francis Ngu uh, noted an earliest known date of April 75, and Jack uh, Roberts noted a last known date of September. So that took about a year um, to get a, re um, a replacement cancellor. And this is an, a, a, a commercial cover. Uh, it's not philatelic, although it's addressed to um, a, a, an auction house. Roger. Yeah. It's noticeable that's upside that's upside down, if you like, again, like no knock. Yes. Star at the bottom. Yes. Well, each time they needed uh, to issue one, um, the 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 the, the councillor had to be taken apart and the letters and so on put in. And I think therefore it's pretty much random. <laughs> um, which way up the clock, I don't, I, we, I, I don't know unless someone can tell us whether the lettering was put in in Kuching uh, or, and indeed a, a thought that occurred to me yesterday when I was getting the last of the slides ready was where were these councillors kept? Um, were they all in Kuching and sent out from Kuching? Or, or given the distances and time involved, were one or two somewhere else at, at, at um, Miri possibly? Uh, Cebu would be the obvious possible choices. Um, and then, as I say, and then who made them up? Um, obviously each day the clerk, who would be familiar from, a, from their ordinary councils of setting the date, would have put the date in. But um, I, I, I haven't seen a picture of one of these. Um, I must go and look it and see whether I can find a picture somewhere in the library at the Royal um, uh, to actually understand how the lettering of Lutong and Sarak was locked in place um, because it certainly was locked in place uh, in some way because by and large the, that lettering doesn't move from day to day. Um, once it's made up they could change the date without this coming loose. Although I think once or twice, there is evidence that it did. Can I suggest that um, the reason the stars at the bottom is perhaps that they actually assembled it upside down? Yes, yeah. I think that's right. I think the question, Len, is whose decision? Was it made at the local loot? Did, did Lu Tong get a box uh, of the usual sort that these um, can oh. that councillors in general travelled in with all the date slugs and so on? And did the clerk at Lu Tong put the L-U-T-O-N-G and so on in place? Or did somebody, when it was issued, 
from a main office, put that bit in and leave the local clerk um, to put just each day to change the date. Or um, there's an another thought was, does this overlap with no knock? If not, did they leave the Sarawak in and just change uh, no knock to Lutong? <laughs> ah, I haven't thought about that and tried measuring it or anything. What I can tell you is looking at the dates, and, and the dates obviously are, are partial, we haven't clearly got all the dates, but looking at them, you can see, I think, at one point in the mid 70s, there were three in use at the same time. So we, that's where, why I think I, I may have said uh, my view is there were at least three purchased, three, three, three sets. It's possible there were more, but certainly I think at one point three were in use simultaneously. Might be worth trying to get an accurate yes. um, yeah. copy. And then, because uh, I've managed to, with my, um, what I've been doing, you can print them out onto a slide sheet and then overlay them. So you can see how accurate do they fit or don't fit, as the saying goes. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I'll try that, uh, Malcolm. OK, there we go. Um, here's, here's a genuinely commercial use to the Central Police Station. Um, uh, Matu um, up on stilts. I hadn't seen that picture of that office before. Um, Matu, uh, this is one of the ones that uh, one of our members, um, I think, produced a small number of examples, um, but uh, it was only in use for a short period. The, the Matu is quite difficult to find. Uh, another well-known um, skeleton use were, were about the first three months of the Riverine Post Office. That was using a, a skeleton until the SLD arrived. Um, this one on a cover to uh, Jack Roberts in Huddersfield. Um, Penrissen Camp again when that opened in 1978. Um, this is a military camp, I think everybody knows. And certainly initially the service, the postal service was limited to military personnel. I don't know whether that's still true. It, it may well be. Um, but uh, the, there was a period when it opened for about three or four months uh, when, again, they were waiting for the uh, SLDs to arrive. And here we are, nice clear strikes, these um, very early first few days uh, of use there. Um, TPO5, um, the councillor was lost um literally fell off the van or something but it was lost and um this is an example where in the absence of a, a number five um they have had to put the word Sariki, which is where tpo5 was based uh it was lost on the 13th of february um the skeleton then took about 10 days, 24th of February, to come into use and was then used for um, a year and year and six months, 18 months, um, before uh, a, a new councillor was obtained to replace the one that was lost uh, here. Um, I quite like the registered covers um, partly uh, they're prettier and they have more stamps on, but also uh, it means that uh, it, they went actually through the post rather than being cancelled by favour uh, and probably taken home rather than uh, sent through the post. But um, here's TPO Sariki, but the label here is uh, MPO number five. It, I, I have not understood the date stamps are always TPOs 
a great many of the printed labels are MPO. Um, I don't attach any great significance to it. It's just curious that the same authorities um, use traveling post office and mobile post office um, interchangeably, but without settling on one rather than the other. Roger, do we, do we know what happened during those 10 days when apparently they didn't have a councillor? No, I had hopes that there were manuscript cancellations, John. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but I've never yes. seen one. <laughs> uh, they saved them all up. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, remember, of course, what probably happened was that the TPO went round and took all of the mail back to Siriki. Yes. And the mail went out with a Siriki um, postmark. Um, ooh. I've got, <coughs> aha, I must have a look. Um, I've got an official cover, official letter, um, which has a um, TPO, uh, sorry, a, yes, a TPO post office chop in the corner, the, the double ring type, you know, where it says clinic or something. This one says TPO five, T five? TPO, I'll have to check, but TPO something, um, but it's cancelled at the base office. Um, oh. And I, it, it's an interesting point you raise as to whether, I, I must check that cover. It had, until you asked me the question, the significance of why it has a TPO chop in the corner, but a base um, office cancel uh, on, the, on the letter, hadn't occurred to me, but I wonder whether it might be a situation like this one, mm, where there wasn't a temporary council available. I'll check that. Here's another one, this time Miri from 1978, um, uh, a, a chunky text letter. Um, in this case, the, the, the councillor was stolen from the post office um, and it was issued, uh, again, it was, you see, it was stolen in February and the, the service resumed, the service, uh, I don't know whether TPO 13 was suspended or whether TPO 13, whether it, the earliest known date, which Jack gives us, um, whether he says service resumed, he means that that was the date the temporary councillor came into use. But um, again, um, the... Uh, the, it, it, it's not clear to me, I, I, because it's difficult to get copies of material, uh, the single line date stamp that replaced TPO 13 has an earliest known date of April 1981, which is three years later. But TPO Miri uh, uh, skeletons are, are not that common. So there may have been, I mean, maybe just an ordinary Miri postmark was used as a temporary measure. Um, we, we, we need to look at that one a little more. Um, or it may be that the single line date stamp arrived much earlier because the early other examples were just taking a few months to arrive. Um, so it may be just that we haven't got a, uh, an SLD TPO 13 um, proper. Uh, er, earliest but known date. But it's still being used in 83, which is interesting. Is that philatelic, cancelled by order or what? Well, you, you, it's difficult to know. Um, I don't have a 1983. Jack's, uh, Jack's collection, which um, Mike Roberts, although he offers to look things up in his father's collection, I sadly, I very rarely um, had a reply to specific inquiries I've sent him. Jack, I, if, if Jack's reported it in 83, he's almost certainly got a cover um, with 83 on it. Um, but it's possible that that was a, you know, a, a one day, one week, one month replacement for, for example, the SLD. If the SLD jammed, which they had a habit of doing, that 83 one may not be the same um, skeleton uh, as, as this one. Um, 
So it's difficult to tell. I'm dubious um, that it would have gone on that long. That's five years. And the number, as we'll see, the number of um, skeletons in use, I don't think they could have left. They wouldn't have kept it made up in the office in case Miri TPO 13 wanted to use it again. It would have been taken apart and the kit put back on the shelf. Um, so I suspect if Jack in Jack's collection, there is an 83 one, it's, it's a separate event. <coughs> um, the Boy Scout Jamboree, uh, well-known one, uh, for two weeks, there was a jamboree um, uh, uh, and uh, jamboree Petrogia uh, Council was made up and used. And uh, there's quite a lot of these examples around. This is a registered letter. Um, here's another uh, philatelic. That looks like Jack's writing to me. Um, here's, here's another one. Um, it, it, it the, I have got, uh, yes, in fact, the, the one we're looking at now um, is my cover dated. It's, a, it's rather faint, but uh, it's quite clear when you look at the original. Um, this is from the 5th of August, 78, um, which was after the jamboree had finished. But as I say, that black ink looks to me suspiciously like Huddersfield black ink. So um, this is probably a by favor cover uh, rather than, um, uh, 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 even though it's registered. Um, uh, I, 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 we, we need to be cautious about that date. Um, now, uh, as I said, it's a pity Francis isn't with us as far as I know today. Um, Francis reported and Jack in turn passed it on to the Strat Journal a skeleton from uh, Jalau, uh, dated the 23rd of June, 1980. Um, I don't have uh, an example of this. I've just taken that out of the Sarayat journal. Um, that obviously is uh, rare. Um, how many of them there are, uh, one simply can't tell. We, there is simply that known example. Um, there is a similar situation at Pakan. Uh, we've got a picture here of the office. Um, Chang Yu Shi reported uh, that there was in October 81 uh, a skeleton. Again, uh, only one date. I've never seen that one uh, in, in, in uh, a real form. Um, and so again, that, that has to be regarded as, as, as very rare. Um, more easily, more often seen, um, Kuching B skeleton. The, this, this is a slightly odd one because you, you as we know, Kuping, Kuching GPO has, more, has a large number of councils at any time. What happened, uh, and, and Jack, reports this in the journal was that uh, as we know the parcels office was moved to a new building at Pending and uh, the <coughs> counter the, pu the public continued obviously to hand over the parcels at the parcels counter in Kuching and a skeleton was made up to, for that uh, counter um, and it has this B, which uh, stands for uh, Bunk, Bunkusen, Bunk, sorry, uh, if anybody wants to correct me, please do. Um, Bunkusan. Bunkusan. Sorry? Bunkusan. Bunkusan, thank you. Um, and uh, which, which means parcel or parcels. And here's another example um, uh, from... Uh, indeed several years later this is January 84 um, and uh, this one to Jack Selsa from uh, certainly I think Chanky Texas writing so um, that was used that went on for some time um, 
TPO4 briefly at Cebu used a skeleton. Um, I have a record that I have a cover dated 30th of January 1984. Um, I can't find it, sorry, <laughs> uh, it's disappeared. Um, uh, it will no doubt turn up somewhere. Uh, Kuching again, um, Jack was didn't offer in the journal any explanation as to why these were used. Um, there's this one is July 84 and uh, the, this has the star in the lower position and uh, I've got on piece here from November which um, is uh, not quite six months, four months later. Um, the, the reason the duration uh, of this is not known. Um, then uh, well known, I'm sure, to colleagues in Kuching who are on this call uh, and, and of a certain age will remember. Um, the, uh, we think of these as modern. I mean, this cancel, this envelope is 35 years old already. So there's certainly a whole generation, even two generations of collectors for whom this is uh, possibly modern, but it is not contemporary. Uh, there was an exhibition um, and it down, you can see Kuching on the 24th and 25th of November, 1985. And a uh, skeleton counselor was used on uh, both days. Uh, there's two examples there, well, one on the 24th, one on the 25th. And also that rather attractive um, ring chop of uh, Serac Philatelic and Numismatic Society. Uh, and there are a number of these uh, covers around. Um, uh, Fra Francis, I, I can't make up my mind with this one, whether, uh, I, I, I think this probably, um, I, I put postally used because I suspect it was postally used, um, but whether it was actually um, from this to Francis, I'm not quite sure. But nonetheless, uh, 25th, when the councillor was at the exhibition, that's what makes me slightly dubious, um, 25th of November, 85 uh, being used there. And then um, one of the things that we, uh, I think I don't think I showed any known councillors um, being introduced, first used in 1984. Notice we skip from 85 to 87. Now, almost certainly things must have happened um, in 1986, uh, given the number of offices and so on, but we simply don't have a record of any skeleton being created in nine, between 1985 and 87. Um, ah, Len, this was the cover I mentioned. It's got the express surcharge paid in stamps. Um, I was talking, I just checked with Len Stanway um, before uh, the presentation. This is an official cover, um, post, uh, Postal Service, um, but it's an express uh, and there, there's obviously free postage um, to Kuala Lumpur. So within, the, uh, within Malaysia, it's, it's free, but the post office does have to pay, sorry, or, or rather this, um, sorry, I beg your pardon, the, the sending office needs to pay the surcharge of $1.50, um, which is the express charge. So, um, but this is 1987. Um, and uh, I, I take Malcolm's point from earlier. It's, it would be worth getting a transparency to see if this letter positioning um, is the same as one of the earlier ones um, or whether it, the councillor has been taken apart and reassembled for subsequent use. Then this is an odd one. This is Batu Nia, which is a small uh, mini post office. Um, it has these very strange, very thin letters. The lettering here, there's a star 
And these these are clearly it's it's the right size. These are clearly the letters 29 September 87, which correspond. You know, it's a standard one, but it's the letters that are strange. And uh, here's a second example um, uh, of it. And again, you can see here very um, thin lettering. So it's very problematic. I, I don't have an explanation for what we're looking at, but it was used from 87 into uh, 88. Um, I was just trying to see, I don't have here um, the date when the proper councillor arrived, but um, it's just an just odd... <coughs> Sorry, John here. Yeah. I'm just wondering who might be supplying these skeleton councils at this fairly late date. <coughs> well, no longer the Crown agents. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, yes, I think so. I think the Crown agents continued to supply co um, ex colonies uh, with these. Um, we'll see in a moment, actually, this, oh, that's a March. Um, that's September. Uh, those look like English months. Right. Um, I'm just uh, wondering if they've got a... If, uh, if, uh, yes, if this is local, somebody else... I mean, to... I suspect this is local lettering. I think you're right, yes. Um, that, that somehow um, they got... They, whether they'd lost a set of lettering, whether they had a, a councillor, but some of the lettering was lost, uh, who knows? It, it, it says Batunia around the top, and this is Miri here, M-I-R-I, -I, oh, with a, a gap oh. there. <coughs> so it, it's really a bit of a mess, uh, to mm. be honest. That's unusual, isn't it? Saying you know, the second town name in the yes. skeleton. Yeah, again, that yes, John, that's right. It, it does suggest it was a bit of a lash-up. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yes, indeed. To, mm. to put it politely, um, <laughs> but that that deserves more 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 work. Except there are so few examples around. Um, yeah. They those who were getting covers from via Jack from Chanky Tex may well have one, but unfortunately they're they're likely all to be the same date. Mm. So we're not going to learn very much unless somebody has uh, others. Um, Have you seen uh, any other skeletons with that similar sort of lash up, or is that the only no, town? No, no, this, this, this is absolutely unique. Right. Um, but it is very close to the point where the um, where the Malaysian dates start to appear. So wh um, whether the, 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 the strange letters relate either to um, the old councillors wearing out, whether it was a prototype, um, who knows? Mm. But uh, I think shortly after, uh, that's March, this is then, you can see this is a temporary, sorry, this is a skeleton, mm. but it's got very different lettering. Um, uh, the 88 slug is upside down, but that's not particularly important. 24th of March, 88. Um, and this replaced this one. So there was clearly some problem with this one um, that they got a new one with, with big letters and, you know, uh, town and Sarawak in, in the standard form. Mm. Um, I, I've only got one example of that, so I don't know how long that was used for. Um, I need to look up and see um but anyway that so that replaced it in march um 88 uh then the university campus at bintulu had an office uh nice clean uh, registered postal stationery envelope um len will no doubt be wondering whether it's a late use of um uh, a particular variety, but I, I think I've compared it, Len, with your book, and, and it's, it's the right envelope in the right time. Um, uh, but I've just got one example of that. 
uh, in most cases, the skeletons are uh, filling in until a later councillor, a permanent councillor arrived. In this case, a, a Reiner councillor arrived. Um, it's got an earliest known date of December 1990, but as I said before, that is just the earliest councillor that I've got. Um, it may well be that uh, the permanent one arrived well before that, um, because otherwise it was in use for three years, which is possible, but um, unlikely. Then um, uh, Wismar Sabakas um, was a shopping mall, uh, and uh, when it opened, um, it had a, a mini post office in it and uh, opened with a, a um, skeleton postmark. Um, here's a there are a number of these. Someone must have collected uh, a whole bundle of these official covers. I've got a number of them, all, all, all from uh, this, this post office. Um, and over a period of time, um, this oddly, this is a slightly, it's clearly genuine, but it's a bit odd. The 19 is inverted and the date on the back with the same councillor says six. So I think the 19 here is probably a mistake. Clark realized it and then put a second chop on the back. Because there's an arrival of on the 7th of July on, in Kuching on the back. Um, and it, here's a commercial one, which is nice. As I said, commercial ones, have, in my view, of skeletons, commercial uh, ones are, are, are very desirable. They're difficult to get. This one has a member of the public's name and address on the back. So it, it's absolutely straightforward. Um, and this from 1991. Um, so it, it, it obviously actually must have been there. Um, sorry, I put the dates on here. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got these early dates in 88. And then the Reiner Council is first known February 1992. So it may even have been there for nearly four years. Uh, and many of these offices, of course, also closed uh, in the late 1990s, early 2000s. So uh, the, these are unusual pieces of, of the postal history of Sarawak. Um, we're almost at the end. Um, Tebadu is way up uh, on the border. It's the main land crossing into Indonesia uh, from, from Kuching to um, Pontianak uh, in Indonesia. And uh, an office opened there with a temporary, uh, a skeleton as a temporary councillor. Um, an English type councillor arrived, um, well, in, by 1991. So uh, that one, Here's a registered official um, letter in 1990. So it was certainly there for a couple of years. Uh, here's a third one. I think the, my last known date for it, November 1990. Um, this is a uh, Borneo Development Corporation were building estates and with, I think, small shopping malls and so on or rows of shops. This is at um, a place called Stampin, Stampin Taman uh, in Kuching and uh, a registered cover here. Um, uh, and then the more traditional um, small office, uh, Santa Bong, um, it, the SLD jammed. There's this picture of the interior with the scales there for weighing. Um, and uh, it seems to have been in use only for um, a month or so. And uh, here's a Chanky Tex cover from Santubong. Um, here is uh, TPO1. Um, there was no explanation, but something had went wrong with the existing TPO1 councillor. 
Again, we get mobile post office number one. The one is an I rather than um, uh, a, a proper uh, one. Um, and uh, Penang Jawa, mini post office, couple of views there. And um, Kampong Penang Jawa, 1989. Um, and th this was used when it opened prior to the arrival of a Rhina Council. Uh, here's a late example. Uh, notice, for the, I think this may be the first time, um, the month here is DI in the Malay form. And this is this sort of second generation. Um, there are slight differences in the letter shapes, but um, you, you notice around in the late 80s, as I said, that they switch to the Malaysian abbreviations uh, rather than the English language ones. Sorry. Um, Siburan um, has councillor here. Again, this is another December. Notice again, DI. This again is 88. So this was in concurrent use and it went on um, into... Um, I read one, 89, I'm sorry, it's, it, sorry, I, 89, this one, um, and uh, I think that's the end. Yeah, sorry, that was uh, a fairly long, and um, it gives you perhaps some idea that um, that covered about half of the known uh, skeletons um, uh, up to 1989, and then there's another... 20 years of them, um, which uh, I, I will uh, cover if people are interested. But I've been so assembling the uh, earliest and last known dates and, and, and the story, but let me at that point uh, stop uh, and if there's any comments or questions, uh, we can perhaps deal with them. Roger, the Jamboree cover that you were questioning the date on the 5th of August one. What's the uh, registration number on, please? Um, the, the, the registration numbers? Yeah, um, the item number. Yeah, I understand. Um, <coughs> sorry, it's easy. Here we are. Uh, it's easier for me to look at. Um, one of them is number 22, which was on the 20th of July. And the... August, 5th of August one, is number 440. Right, okay. Uh, the reason I ask is I've got the last day of the Jamboree cover, the 31st, uh, which is 406. So uh, it's still a fair number of items. <coughs> yes. Mm. But at least it makes the, the 440 look... Uh, I mean, it presumably, I, I'm, I, the Jamboree would have finished, but at least the 440 is plausible uh, yeah. in, in terms of the sort of list we saw from TPO7. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Good. What do you mean by plausible, Roger, that they are, were actually done on the last day rather than post the Jamboree? No, I, I, I think possibly for some reason, uh, I either, uh, but a list, uh, there must have been, yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe it could have been done on the last day and postmarked much later. Um, mm. I think it's more likely that, that somehow, whether maybe there was an office, an administrative office, because I assume uh, something of that size you'd have had an administrative office, um, they might have kept the post office open to deal with correspondence and so on relating to the Jamboree after the Boy Scouts presumably had gone home. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, that's one of those with the... Yeah, I mean, Chanky Tex could probably yeah. tell us uh, if we contacted him. Mm -hmm. mm. Right here. Right. Yes. Um, in that case, I suggest we stop. Um, 
So, sorry, I we've gone slightly we, longer than sometimes, but I suggest uh, we think. I, I, I have to say, I found it a fascinating topic. The and the life of some of these must be extremely short. Yes. Well, Roger, I mean, thank you very much indeed. It's a real eye opener. And once again, you don't have to go back a hundred years to get very rare material. No, I, I well. Yes, I, I, I look forward to the prices going up, should I ever sell them. <laughs> <laughs> it might be limited market, right. of course. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not quite sure what's happening next week, um, but uh, I'll send an email around when I, I get hold of, um, uh, I've been in touch, when I've been in touch with LT. Okay. Oh, okay. I've, I've got something, ah. possibly, but not for next week, because I'm away next week. Okay. Okay, so... Somewhere in the down maybe, the road. Maybe the week after, Malcolm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then. Have Thank a good you. week, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.